The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling the disciples to himself, Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contrib contributors to the treasury. For they all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, the key word or the key concept is generosity. And the generosity which received the gratitude in the first case of Elijah and the blessing of Jesus in the second reading. But the point is that this reality of generosity and gratitude is truly the whole theme of the entire scriptures. To recognize that the experience of generosity and gratitude together produces friendship. And the friendship of, of us with God is the whole point of the scriptures. My name is Father Cyrus Gallagher. I am a Capuchin Franciscan priest, Capuchin like Padre Pio, visiting you from Colorado Springs, Colorado, of course at your Pastor Bob's invitation. And in his generosity, he's invited me to bring along with me 100 others in photograph. You'll see them here in front. These are members of our faith family who are living in one of our Catholic missions in poverty, who want to form an alliance of friendship with you, with generosity and gratitude to make the friendship real. Some 40 years ago, some people in Kansas City, sitting in the pews, just as you are, good Catholic people, said, you know, we need this whole experience of friendship in our families with gratitude, with generosity. We need it in our parish. We need it around the world. But it's not enough to buy a bag of rice and send it off to Haiti or sink a well in Bolivia. We need a personal relationship like Elijah and the widow like Jesus and the widow in the, in the gospel. How can we do that? Well, one of those people knew a missionary in Guatemala. They wrote a letter, back him a picture of a little girl not able to go to school because she did not have the school books. She did not have the uniform, but she wanted to be a nurse. <clears throat> she was trying to teach herself to read and write. <clears throat> they said, that's our goddaughter. She is going to reach her goal. They did three simple things. One, they sent a letter of support, promising daily prayer, asking for her prayers. Second, they continued to send a small donation every month or so to help her with her schooling. Third, and this is key to what they were inspired to do and what we do in the agency I represent called Unbound, they sent their own photograph. And with letters and photographs back and forth, she did become a nurse. And that has caught the imagination of more than 300,000 people who form an alliance of friendship with one of our young people or elders in one of our foreign Catholic missions, all in the poor sections of our world. Sub-Sahara Africa, the poor countries of South America, the Philippines, and India. Join us. There are three parts to what we do. When someone comes to our mission and says they'd like to join our program, we say to them, are you willing to pray every day for the people of St. Cecilia Parish in Clearwater, Florida? They have no idea where we are, of course, but they pray twice a day for those who hear this message. So every photograph I have with me represents an individual and a family praying for you. Ask the Lord to give them and the people around you the same gift they are praying for, a deeper faith, a stronger hope, a more active love. That really is, in honesty and simplicity, the generosity of the Spirit that calls us to pray for one another in simplicity and fidelity. But we go farther. The second part of what we do is what you see in my hand, what you see right in front, what you might have noticed when you came into to church this evening on this side, individual photographs taken less than 90 days ago. And I'll say this more than once because it's unique to us. 
When you take this picture of Anne, a little girl, eight years old, living in poverty with her family in Kenya, Africa, no one else will have her photograph. No one else will have the information inside as to how an alliance of friendship will help her and her family move forward out of poverty toward security. You will receive two letters from her every year. Her parents or teachers will write until she's able to write in English. You will receive a new photograph every year. So you see how Anne is growing into a young lady, developing her talents and skills. And in addition to your prayers, say in your heart, you know, when I choose a new friend here, I'm going to send a note. I'm going to let them know that somebody here at St. Cecilia's is on their side. That's so precious and important to them. When I visit the missions and I go into their homes, which are off of the size of our tool sheds, mud floor, no electricity, no running water, corrugated metal roof, when my eyes get used to the dark, I see your picture or your letter hanging on the wall. It's that precious to them. Third part of what we do, first is prayer, simple, faithful. The second part is the actual one-to-one -one relationship. Third, you will not be surprised since we're talking about helping a family move out of poverty towards security, financial. $36 a month until Anne reaches the goal, whatever that could be. High school diploma, college degree, she, she wants to be a doctor. We will stay with her until she reaches whatever goal is appropriate to her. Or until the Lord calls you to another ministry. We ask you to begin this evening to make a choice to choose one of our children or elders, but if the Lord calls you to another ministry or for any reason at any time you need to pull back temporarily or permanently, you let us know. We never ask you to do this under guilt and obligation, but invitation and opportunity. But as soon as I say the word money, I need to tell you a couple things. One is that more than 94 cents of every dollar you give to Anne goes to her. Inside it's going to say 93, actually 92.7. But I know it's more than that because I visit the mission and I know we know how to stretch a dollar. But Charity Navigators, Better Business Bureau, and other what are called watchdog agencies come into our office twice a year to check our books. And just recently, last week, they indicated that we, Unbound, are the most effective child sponsorship agency in the United States. We're proud of that, and you need to know it. Also, of course, we are a charitable organization, so every dollar you give to Anne is tax deductible. The end of the year, we send you a letter making that real. Lastly, some people say to me, Father, $36 a month, where'd that ever come from? Well, when we started the program 40 years ago, we asked for $5 a month. You can see, 10, 20, 30. Just at the beginning of last year, we had to move up to 36 simply to maintain the same level of benefits. I know you understand that better than I. This is rampant inflation. You can remember, I'm sure, we could buy a bottomless cup of coffee for less than a dollar, and now it's three dollars or more. Well, it's worse than the missions. And it's because of that that some people say to me, Father, generosity? The Lord has been gracious and generous to me. I have the ability to express that generosity by $40 a month, or 45 or 50 If that's the case, when you fill out the form, you simply indicate what's right for you. That way I'll be able to keep saying 36 as long as I possibly can. Now, personally, when I first heard this, I thought this makes sense. Generosity and gratitude together make the friendship of the Lord real in our lives and real in our world. But as I mentioned, I am a Capuchin Franciscan priest. I do not have a bank account. So I went home to my brothers. At the time, I was living with three other men, and I said, do you think our budget will hold $40 a month so I can participate in this program? No problem, they said. We already buy fair trade coffee from Guatemala. This has caught your imagination. You go for it. So I picked up the first folder. Some people say, ah, eight years old, my daughter's eight. She was born on our wedding anniversary. This is my brother's, my daughter's birthday. My wife's birthday. I thought the Lord will choose. I didn't, didn't even look. I picked up the first folder. It happened to be an older lady. 
we are the only agency in the church that forms an alliance or friendship with individual elders as well to give them a life of dignity and security. Her name is Angelina. She's now more than 88 years old. She lives in the mountains of Guatemala. She tells me, before I came to the mission, I would pick coffee on my own around the edges of the plantation because, of course, as a poor woman, she owns no land. But because I have arthritis, cannot bend my fingers very well, I could only pick a couple pounds a day and try to sell my coffee in the common marketplace. Nobody would buy it. People would steal it. But she heard about our, our mission. She let us take her picture. I have her photograph. By the way, she has mine. And now she says, because of the $40 a month that you make to the clinic, I can go there and get arthritis medicine with no cost to me, flex my fingers better than ever, pick twice as much coffee in less time, and because of the Catholic community there, I can sell my coffee for an honest price through Fair Trade Guatemala, send my granddaughter to school. This is what we do. Good working people supporting good working people. Join us. Rosalie, to the little girl of eight, had to go with Grandma and sit in the shade every day while Grandma picked coffee because Mom works in a factory, Dad drives a truck, both have jobs, and I'm going to tell you the truth, but it's hard to believe, honestly it is, Mom and Dad together make less than $100 a month. It's incredible. It's not their fault that their government is corrupt and their economy has collapsed, but that's the reality. But now, Rosalita is in school every day. This is what we do. Join us. Now, when I got that letter from my adopted grandmother, I w it was in Spanish. If you don't know the language, you get two letters, the original with the translation. Then when you write to Anne in Kenya, your letter is translated into Swahili. But I got that letter telling me what I just told you, that my grandmother sells her coffee to Fair Trade Guatemala. I was getting supper ready at our house. I was cook for our community that night. My grandmother sells her coffee to Fair Trade Guatemala. Then I remember, we buy our coffee from Fair Trade Guatemala. Then I look at the package where I'm getting the coffee beans from, and I think maybe some of the beans I have in my hand were actually picked by my adopted grandma. I do not know that, of course. We'll find that out at Heaven's Gates. But that's what an alliance of friendship does. Brothers and sisters, there are no accidents in the Lord's plan. The Lord knew, of course, that we buy our coffee from Fair Trade Guatemala. I picked up a folder at random. I didn't even look. It happened to be a lady who lives in Guatemala who picks coffee and sells it to Fair Trade Guatemala. This is the way the Lord works. The Lord knows exactly who comes to Mass at 4 o'clock at St. Cecilia. He also knows who is visiting looking for an alliance of friendship. He knows how the generosity and the gratitude of the two people going to be involved in a relationship here produces the friendship which is a value on both sides. Brothers and sisters, join us. Join us now. Join us as you listen to me. Ask the Lord to give you, the people around you, and the people here, visiting you in photograph, a deeper faith, a stronger hope, a more active love. After communion, I'll be more specific as to how we actually do this. But ask the Lord to be with you so that you can honestly say, you know, I have a godson who lives in India. He's top of his class. He wants to be a veterinarian. I helped his family buy a cow so they would have a greater sense of security. How do I know that? He writes me letters, and I write back. We are friends. What a blessing that is. After communion, I'll say more. Now we'll continue the Mass with the Creed. We'll go to communion as we do every Sunday. We'll go out of the church to put the gospel into our world in every way that Cecilia has already does. But by saying, you know, I have a grandma who lives in Bolivia. I helped her get new eyeglasses. I know that. She writes me letters. This is what we do. After communion, I'll be more specific. Now we'll continue the Mass.